the Jubilee government, when they campaigned for their second term, they promised to create 1.3 million jobs annually if re-elected for a second term. On top of that, they say that 30% of all procurement, sh uh, government procurement deals should go uh, to the youth and to women. But as data has shown us, that is not the case. All right, Delina, you're also a mental health consultant, I'm told. Yes, sure. All right. Okay, so move, let's move this conversation forward. When you hear of these appointments, what's your response? Of course, the latest is of Mary Wamboy, Chair National Employment Authority. Do you have any confidence in her ability to chair that agency? Right, Olive, uh, thank you so much, by the way, for creating such a platform um, live on NTV. And we really appreciate that even mainstream still, you know, things a lot about the youth. And um, this is a platform whereby at least once in a while we get to echo what we think, uh, you know, the um, injustices that are continuing, you know, happening in the country in terms of, uh, you know, right from the day the government is elected. They always talk about, you know, their manifestos, talking about... Um, um, creating more jobs for the young people. These are the young people I think they're talking about. <laughs> I'm not so shocked because um, the latest figures show that um, Kenya's unemployment is just over around 7% to 8%. And um, I'm so shocked to hear that out of uh, the 9 out of 10 who are unemployed are uh, below 35 years old. And About 85% of them are Actually, 85%, yeah. see. So what does this actually translate to what our government is thinking about? Um, this is not a shock when I'm seeing uh, the headlines on the newspaper that all those, <laughs> yeah, call them old, old, oldies, you know, are the ones who think they can get into uh, these, uh, you know, jobs and work even better than us. I don't know what uh, the power uh, digital communication has brought is really doing. Because um, just try to imagine uh, my uh, father or grandparent just getting into a laptop and uh, trying to create some content. I mean, they will not even spend even 10 minutes on the laptop, they definitely will doze off or even feel like they cannot do anything anymore. So I'm just wondering what value are they going to add after being given these positions? Because if they have been there for more than 60 years, what value do they bring and what is it the government is really thinking that they're going to create? Other than the government losing, uh, you know, trust and honest in terms of how in quotes we, we miss appropriate funds. I don't think that is so justifiable to throw us out of the dock and say, you know, um, the oldies have experience and they ought to manage the funds well and ABCD. And I was also shocked to hear that um, the CES for teach um, uh, I think uh, collapsed the Weasel Fund, the Youth and uh, the Women Enterprise Fund to create one entity known as Biashara Fund. So I'm wondering is it another, you know, narrative that we are having in the country that, you know, that they continue on shrinking, you know, the amounts uh, that um, they ought to give to the biggest number of population in the country? I mean, wh where are we headed? Right. No one leaves me in a topsy turvy totally. Okay. Yes. Diana, how, yes. I mean, what was your reaction uh, to that bit of news? Okay. Um, thank you so much for the question, for, you know, inviting me to the show and also for the question that you just asked. Um, as a youth organization, we're a national youth organization, and I was just telling my colleague here that we're actually 23 years old. Youth Agenda has been there since 1996, and this came just immediately after the multi-party democracy wave. Uh, the organization is national in nature. We have youth networks in different counties, and what we do is that we advocate for the inclusion of young people in the social, political, and, and economic sectors. So that means I'm probably a fourth generation leader in that organization, which means, again, by the time I get to 35, I exit the organization and I give a chance to the young people to come and lead. Uh, what we do, our work is very serious and we don't uh, tend to be responsive or reactive to issues that happen and maybe get us as young people to lose focus of what is actually going on in the country. I would say in the immediate question and maybe the recent appointments and the one you just asked is that um, my disappointment in that is that um, we have lost the spirit with which the authority was set up to, was established to do. If you remember the bill in 2016, it was actually called National Youth Employment Authority. And I think in the, in the, in the interest of in being inclusive, the name youth was dropped. The bill had been presented to parliament and I think sponsored by Honorable Sakaja, who was then a nominated uh, MP representing the young people in parliament. And so the spirit there, and if you even read the bill itself, it says that the authority is established to maintain a database for young people, to ensure that they get opportunities, not just for 
public appointments, but for the public sector, the private sector, and the civil society, or basically <coughs> all the economic actors in Kenya. <coughs> and so to us as young people, knowing that this authority was established to work for us, then we would expect that the, uh, the nature of the appointments and the people that are being put in place are actually people who carry the spirit of the day. That authority is supposed to be working for young people to give us opportunities so that we, we stop being dependents reduce the number of dependents in the country, that means you become economically independent, whether you're getting a job or access to procurement or you're, having, you're setting up your own business and actually creating more employment opportunities. And so I think the, the narrative, yes, the youth unemployment crisis in Kenya is actually, we, we feel like it needs to be declared an emergency. It needs to be, declared, to be declared an emergency and people need to look for ways of improving the situation as it is, as opposed to being responsive to the recent appointment. In fact, for me, this is a whole other discussion of where our president seems to have truly lost his mind. And I don't know who is advising the president on these matters. When he goes on national television again to repeat that the, the, the reason why he's appointing old people, as he said it himself, is that they are custodians of the resources in those institutions. That is actually insulting to us as young people. Knowing that in just 2018, he was named as the global youth ambassador, or rather the global youth champion in a United Nations uh, city. So then we are like, Mr. President, what is there for the youth? What, what do you want from us? Why, why do you keep excluding us from uh, tough conversations, excluding us from having a seat at the table to have meaningful engagements? The, Ag the Jubilee Manifesto, as my colleague has rightfully said, promised so many nice things for, for young Kenyans. Have they even delivered on that? The answer is very much no. Okay. So the conversation needs to go beyond just one person being appointed or the number of people being appointed. What is the spirit with which these people are being appointed? If, and if it's political appointees, then we also invoke the chapter, the chapter 12 and chapter 6 of the Constitution that actually speaks to, to the integrity mm. of the, the process with which our leaders are being put in place. Okay, yes. and we'll come back to that. Mm. But uh, let me just uh, divert our attention uh, yes. for a bit. Uh, we're headed to the coast where Kevin Mutai is reporting on, or rather will update us on the report that four people perished after the raging waters of a flooded river swept away their double cup pickup at Matinyani area in, uh, okay, okay, that one we'll get later. That was in Kitui and three bodies have been retrieved in that particular incident, but Kevin, is bringing us an update on what is transpiring at the coast presently. Kevin, is it raining where you are and uh, what is the situation? Well, good morning, Olive. Uh, the rains have been pounding uh, since 5 a.m. Uh, this morning in Mombasa, and I'm informed uh, that uh, there are uh, certain areas uh, that have, uh, or rather, uh, that uh, uh, Daily activities have been paralyzed because of the rains. Even some of the people have not been able to access uh, transportation to uh, various places, even workplaces. Even some of our colleagues have not managed to leave uh, their houses because of the rains. And as you can see, this uh, where I'm standing right now is Ziwa Langombe, is in uh, Kisauni, and uh, this is one of the areas that uh, has also been affected by the heavy downpour. And uh, even in the nearby school, I'm also seeing that some students are even struggling trying to uh, go or rather to, uh, uh, to, 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 to go through the harsh, the harsh situations because you can see the floodwaters have even uh, blocked uh, the roads and uh, getting access to even the uh, learning institutions is becoming even difficult. I'm also informed that even uh, residents are also uh, having quite some hard time uh, uh, with the situation because also even the border border riders in this particular place cannot even go through or rather wade through the waters, the flood waters that, have, uh, that are becoming stagnant in uh, most of the roads and rendering them impossible. Uh, but let me quickly speak to some of them and just try and get to understand uh, what are their thoughts about the ongoing rains that have been pounding uh, Mombasa. Kwanza jitambulisha kwa majina wa ituanani alafu tuleze umeathirika vipi na mvua mbao imekue kinyesha. Kwa machina na ito Levitic House Joshua, mi ni mkazo hapa, nafanya piyashara mahali hapa, piyashara ya chakula. Na kwa tangu hata asubui, sija pata hata kasu ya mata moja kwa sababu ya, hawatoki kwa nyumba kwa sababu ya mvua mingi na machi mingi. Kwa, kwa hata mwenye, pia hata mepata nyumba yangu imingi ya hata machi kwa sababu ya, ya, ya mvua mingi. Na hiyo imeaziri ni 
kufikia sasa hii huwa nimetengeneza pesa lakini sijapata hata shilingi hata moja. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Na pengine hali hii utatarajia kwa sababu tunaweza kuona uh, utabiri wa hewa uliweza kusemekana uh, kwamba huenda hali hii ikaendelea kwa siku tatu zijazo. Je, pengine umejiandaa kivipi ili kuweza kustahimili hali hiyo? Itapita tunifunge kwa sababu mvua inazidi zaidi. Siku itaenda kwa muda gani? Maana watu watembee kabisa ikienda kwa sababu ya chakula. Wata watembee kabisa mko huko moja. Okay. Yeah. Sawa sawa. Eh naona umekaribia hebu tueleze majina ni nani alafu tueleze mvua iko vipi na inakupelekaje huko. Kwa majina naitwa Abdul Latif Karanja. Na uh-huh. mimi ni mkazi wa hapa Ziwa la Ngombe. Na ukiangalia hapa mbele wetu maji imekuwa mingi. Hata hapa kupita ni shida wale wanakaa kule hawapiti uh, huko. Eh uh, hali yetu iko hivyo. Hali yetu ni tata sasa hivi. Na je, pengine unapoangalia maji ya, ya kiwa pale ama kuna mabomba ya kupitisha maji taka hali iko vipi ama uh, so lazima la mindo msingi? Mabomba ma, hiyo mashimo ya kupeleka maji taka ilichimbwa lakini hatujui kwa nini haipeleki kozi iko, sahi iko lakini haipeleki hiyo maji. Mm. Uh, well, Olive, we've done a spot check in some of the areas and uh, the most affected uh, areas uh, include Bombolulu, uh, the areas also in Kibarane where hundreds of uh, motorists are likely to be affected and of course also those who are catching up with the flights, uh, the train uh, going about their daily duties might be affected because of the rains that has also contributed to heavy traffic in uh, most of the roads and as I said earlier, people are really reeling from uh, this uh, situation and as you had uh, that uh, even some of them are deciding to close shops uh, because they don't have customers and people have just decided to stay indoors uh, because of the situation. We are monitoring and indeed we will be updating our viewers on the happenings here in Mombasa uh, concerning the rains that have been pounding since yesterday and people are brave, uh, uh, preparing to go, uh, experience this situation that is not only uh, beginning today but uh, is expected to go through all the way uh, to Sunday but of course will be on standby and will be covering uh, the situation for you and our viewers. Olive. All right. Uh, thank you, Kevin Mutai. Of course, the Kenya Med Department had issued an advisory for heavy rain. Now, Kevin is also staying on the Aisha Jumwa story. She spent the night in the police cells. He will be following up on her, uh, her appearance before the court this morning uh, for the court's decision on her release. The state, of course, had asked uh, to keep her in custody longer while investigations are carried out. All right, back to our conversation this morning, and that has to do with youth employment, unemployment, youth unemployment. And as I said, joining me this morning, I have Enoch, uh, Diana, Edwin, and Deline. So we've heard from Diana on the subject. Edwin, who would you have wanted to see chairing the National Employment Authority? And uh, what was your hope for what, what did you hope the authority would achieve for the youth in Kenya? Thank you so much, uh, Olive, for having me here today. And I'm going to tell you for sure, the first thing that came in my mind when Mary Omboy was appointed was, are we becoming a Kenyan that is being colonized by old people who have money and keep having money and looting? And by the time our young people come to, uh, by the time we reach 2050, we have no future for this country, though we say we have a vision 2030. Why? Um, well, the moment she got appointed, I was like, I don't know this lady. I've only heard her from the stories of Atul Magarian and those other fiction stories and the cases she had. She hasn't done anything in Othaya. That same case to goes to all these old people. When someone is getting old and when they're growing, uh, their mind starts going back in a way. I don't want to say they don't have the experience. Well, they do have the experience. But for people like us, seeing them there, it's painful. It's, how would I put it? It's, um, it's, 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 it's not acceptable. We have young people who can, I mean, let me say the likes of, um, Johnson Sakaja gave this as an idea. If the someone like him would have been consulted, this would, been a, oh, this, oh, sorry. <clears throat> this would have been a very good idea for him to be consulted and then chair the person or give out a person who can be, be suggested to be on that table. But going with Mary Wamboy, that was, out of the picture. We didn't expect that because that means we are going to still keep on tarmacking on this country unless we come up with ideas of building our own businesses, which is what we are doing. 
Okay. Now, the purpose of the National Employment Authority, we talked about how the youth was dropped so as not to leave out anybody, but the youth do form 85% of the unemployed in this country, and its purpose is basically to carry out surveys, find out what skills are needed, and advise accordingly the training institutions uh, on what skills are needed so that they can provide those, that particular training. Deline, how did you receive that news? Who would you have liked to see uh, chairing the National Employment Authority? Oh, wow. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Olive. Well, it goes without saying that I was shocked, obviously. And just as my colleagues said, I feel it is a violation to the public trust and also to the youth at large. Because year after year, election after elections, we've always had the government say, we'll give more opportunities to the youth, we'll create more opportunities to the youth. Just like my brother said, uh, initiatives such as the Youth Enterprise Development Fund, the WESO Fund, we don't know where they are right now. And such initiatives are what are supposed to provide, or rather give the youth platforms, especially the youth in the creative arts. It should provide for them opportunities to take loans for self-development. But where are they now? We don't know. So I feel it is really, really a public violation. And the government obviously has not kept its promise. And if we keep waiting for the government to create employment for the youth or give jobs, which I can confidently say, there are no jobs. Jobs are scarce, you know? And if you keep waiting for them to give us jobs, I think it's, it's like waiting for Moses to part the Red Sea, you know? Mm. Which is close to impossible. So I really feel that that position would definitely would have been given to a youth. Okay. Who, for example, would you like to have seen chairing the authority? Well, we have so many youths. We have myself. Yes, mm. even myself. So, but uh, generally... Um, there are so many youths who could have been given that platform. Mm. Not only to mention specific people, but it could be even a public announcement, you know, so that the relevant people or people who feel they meet that criteria will have applied. And I feel it will have been a fair process. All right. Yes. Okay. Uh, I'll come back to you, Enoch. You, yes, you made yes. reference to what President Ruhi Kenyatta said when he appointed yes. Moody Awori to chair the sports fund. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and he said the young people are just not trustworthy. Do we just want to get rich? Too quick, do we not have a work ethic? Okay, I disagree with that notion. And um, I'm, I'm so disappointed to hear that somebody we really trusted and we elected um, and uh, we thought he was going to champion, you know, the feelings and um, our goals and objectives of, of the youth in the country. And when it reaches, you know, in, uh, in such a situation, <laughs> what I can only just advise the youth, Let's just create our own things and start doing our own employment online. I mean, what else are we going to do? Because if the president himself can answer such words and say that it's about mistrust and nothing else. And um, let's just go back to what um, is required of us to get even these jobs. We always go there and this is what we are told. What's your ex experience, right? Then if you do not qualify for that job, what do they go next? What connections do you have? Then um, if, if you don't have a connection towards that particular job, then um, um, what skill do they want from you? They will find a way of nullifying you out of that job. Mm. So well and good, as much as we would say that we're waiting for the government to do something for us, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen only anytime soon. So what I'm just trying to say here is um, let them have their own jobs. Digital communication. I'm actually a very big ambassador of digital communication. That's why I'm doing my graduate studies at USIU um, uh, for my uh, master's in, 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 um, in all the social media, everything that we have around. And um, if you could see on what statistics have, I mean, go on to history back to 2003 when LinkedIn was created. It was founded in uh, 2002 and launched in 2003. Why is this platform available? As much as, you know, most of the corporate institutions do not embrace, and I really don't have statistics to say whether they really don't look on our CVs that we post on LinkedIn and many of the other platforms that can really enable us to uh, get such jobs. Eh? But what I'm thinking is, let us stop this narrative of we're waiting for the government to create jobs for us. Let's just do our own entrepreneurial skills. I mean, let's go online and uh, create crazy things. I mean, somebody else somewhere said that fake news sells. I mean, as long as it's not illegal, just go and do something there, you oh, know? Goodness <laughs> me. All right. But the government does yeah. have to provide an environment that is conducive to young people uh, pursuing business and succeeding uh, in that pursuit. So you talked about the, the opportunities that are made available via uh, the internet. Yeah. 
so uh, Diana, some of if, if the government government were asked what they do, what they're doing for the youth to create employment, they maybe the reference Ajira, mm -hmm. which was meant to capitalize on that, mm -hmm. and and NYS, mm -hmm. are they limiting? Which is, which is no longer yeah. the youth. <laughs> Are we limiting the youth? I mean, thank you for actually uh, saying that the government's role is actually to create an enabling environment for the economic actors to thrive. Mm -hmm. And rightfully, as he has mentioned as, as well, is that the youth need to create their, the, not to create their own spaces, but to, op to take the chance to optimize the digital platform or the, you know, the, that, re that whole revolution that is happening around. Um, I would say the government maybe is trying, I would not speak for them, when I work in the civil society, we are supposed to be the, city, the citizen watchdog. That means that we watch out for the public interest on what the government is doing. As you pay your taxes, whether it's through employment, whether it's through the public goods or whatever you use, then you actually deserve to have a service from the government. And such are these authorities that are created to, be, to enable the young people to optimize the opportunities that are there. But we feel like they're not doing as much as they could. And we don't think it's just literally for the legislators, because we, we've had of online conversations where we're asking where are the young legislators who are in parliament or who are in the, uh, uh, the assemblies, the county assemblies and the national assembly, what are they doing on our behalf? Are they just keeping quiet and watching the executive do as they please? No, they're also supposed to be there to play a role. They need to come together and convene. We have seen when uh, the women unite behind gender advocacy, when the two-third gender bill was not passed and they were walking and saying, this is not what's supposed to happen, they united. So we are calling upon the young legislators, those in the corridors of power, to call out the executive for this uh, these evidently exclusive forms of appointments or opportunities being given to people. And the private sector is, I think, is trying its best through the, um, I think, KEPSA, the Kenya uh, Private Sector Alliance. I think they've done so well in trying to ensure that youth are included in, 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 in the private sector engagement. And even in terms of economic governance, and when you're looking at growing a country from a third world country to a first world country, which is somehow encompassed in our vision 2030, which is to see Kenya being a globally competitive uh, country by 2030, you find that diversity, workforce diversity is very important. You can't have a bunch of old people sitting alone trying to make uh, policies or decisions or creating an enabling environment for young people in future. Mm. It will not happen. These uh, 70 year olds and 80 year olds and sometimes even 90, there's, yeah, the 90 year olds how will they project how 10 years from now will look like the bare minimum and this is a discussion we're having offline again the bare minimum we can take is can they consider having experts and I say experts who have not yet reached the, the retirement age, yeah. for instance. And why like that, just ensure that the youth are included in the conversations, because we know what we want for our future. I can confidently, you know, God willing, say that 30 years from now, this is what I envision for Kenya. Can the same be said for, for the people that are being appointed? Let us have futuristic views. Even as politicians- you have something invested in the future. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and I would also urge the young people when you're, when you're voting, think of that politician who will carry the policies for 30 years to come. Mm -hmm. What do they envision for your county as they lead your counties? What do they envision for your constituency? Even in the word levels, that word representative that you're having, do they have a vision? Mm -hmm. You know, we need to now awaken our youth consciousness. And I'm glad to see young people here. These are the people I interact with. We are the majority of the voters. We are the majority yeah. of the voters, but then we vote for the people who will come and disrespect us on, on national platforms and tell us, what do you want me to do? If I give young people a chance, this is what they do. We are supposed to say, no, we do not take it. And we also call upon the leaders that we have elected who are young. In fact, I would say the members of county assembly, 50% of them are youths. They are actually below 35. This is the MCAs. Those are young legislators. Yes, in the county level, but they're still legislators. Can we call upon them and say, you need to come out together, collect yourselves and say no. Because when you come together, then they will listen. The executive will listen to the young legislators. All right. Edwin, yeah. is it true that this generation has no work ethic <laughs> and perhaps no scruples? They just want to get rich as fast as they can. I don't think that's a question, it's an answer, which is a yes. Why? Um, just as she's saying, we've reached a point whereby for you to be in a position, a good big position, let me say for example, if I was to, um, to go ahead and uh, try and get that job, apply for the job, probably they would have said no. Why? I do not have the experience. 
I do not have one. But let's look at the people they are taking that are saying they have experience. But you do have the experience of, of looking for a job. <laughs> <laughs> The chairperson, the chairperson. Yes, I do have that. It's 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 tiresome. Yeah, we well, just I just reached the point. <laughs> you know, applying. You go to places and you're told. At some point, some places you're told like you have to give some money. At some point, you are, you you asked what's your experience. At yeah. some point, you are like we need this degree. You go with that degree. They tell you we need this, 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 and that. It's frustrating. Yeah. That's what the ground is doing. You go to so many places and the things you're told is not what you expect. For example. Uh, okay, let me not go that road. I just want to handle this. Mary Wamboi, you look at her age and look at what, I don't know what criteria that I was used to select her, but this is someone who has money in her pocket already. This is someone who is established. Now, her coming to that kind of opposition, having in mind that the National Employment Authority was just registered three years ago, this is something that needed someone that has, how would I put it, that someone that has uh, uh, the energy to run it, the energy to take it to the next level. Not someone who is looking at how they're going to relax, because honestly, watch this. The next four, three years, this thing will be nothing. Okay. We are going to talk about... When, when Esther Murungi wa was being interviewed for yes. the position of member of the National Lands Commission, she said she's fitter than uh, most, <laughs> <laughs> than many th yes. people in their yes. 30s. Yeah. Uh, yes. So is it really, uh, do you think age is a predictor of the vitality or you're talking about? Yes, it is on this. On this case, having something that has just been registered just the other day and it needs to run, and all the youths and everyone that who is looking for a job are looking as that as a channel to help them, it is. All right. Because it needs someone who has the experience that, at least someone who has been able to create something. Othaya has been there. What has happened in Othaya in a time of raining? Now, when she was running Otai as an MP, coming here to something that needs to be built, needs people who have power, at least even if she's not going to be able to handle it, then let her put people who are going to act on her behalf. Okay. It needs this. All right. Deline, is there a JIRA program? Uh, is uh, the effort to, you know, the, ever since President, I mean, President Hul Kenyatta, since his first term, has been trying to revitalize uh, the National Youth Service. Are those efforts sufficient for you? Well, definitely not. The efforts are not sufficient because they're preaching water and drinking wine. We're not seeing what the government is saying being put to test. For instance, all those initiatives that, that were put in place that were scrapped off, why are they scrapping them off? On the contrary, they should add more initiatives to make opportunities for the youth. Generally, the government should just create more platforms for the youth. And I'd like to disagree when the, with the fact that many people always think that the current youth, our aim is just to make money or rather get quick rich scheme. That is not true. We just need the platforms and the relevant platforms that we're supposed to follow so that we see where to start and how to self-develop ourselves, you know. So I think we should, we should just have those platforms in place. And as the youth, will definitely do a good job. All right, let's add more voices to this conversation before I come back to you, Edwin. Uh, we have Bernard Ojuang, who's uh, standing by in Migori County. Uh, Bernard, what do the youth in your county have to say on this subject? Well, uh, to start with, uh, uh, during each and every electioneering period, we usually get uh, politicians promising youths a lot, uh, many jobs, and they are saying that once I'll be elected, I'll create job opportunity. And also, we've been getting uh, youthful leaders uh, campaigning and also saying that once elected, I'll ensure that my uh, colleagues and my fellow youths are employed, but after being elected, these uh, uh, the, the issue of being, uh, the issue of employment are just going to where they nobody's talking about it and of course and also after that they usually come up with the issue of innovation, telling youths at least to be innovative, something uh, some of the youths in the country have started and also some of uh, some of the youths here are saying that they, 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 they want politicians at least to fulfill what they promised them during uh, their campaigns and start with I'll be talking to one uh, youth here. You said with your name, do you think uh, the issue of employment is something to talk of currently, or uh, youth should come up with their own way of creating their job opportunities? 
I think in Kenya there is uh, nothing that people can talk of in terms of employment. Because if there was, I would walk direct to the Ministry of Employment and ask somebody. There is no ministry like that. So once you know that is the state, you cannot move to somebody to ask about it. So nobody is responsible for that. So I'd urge youths to be creative. Start your own way of survival. Strike a path. Be creative. Get something that you can do. Entrepreneurship, it takes time to grow. Some of us have the tendency of thinking that once you start something, it will just happen. If you took 20 years to grow, even that your business needs time to grow. Develop it, keep with it, and then you'll pick up from there. You'll even create an opportunity for other people. Instead, Do you think the government has fulfilled, fulfilled uh, their promise there of a job, creating job opportunity for the youth in the country? The government cannot fail it because three quarters of the population are youth. And we, the, we, during electioneering period, you see the most heckling people are youths, meaning they are still idle as, the, as we are talking today. If they were engaged, we would not be seeing them all over. And even uh, around you as you walk, you will always be seeing youths idling around. There is a very dangerous thing being assumed as employment. This thing called motorbike, piti piti boda boda something. You follow the track three years down the line, those who you, whom you knew are already dead because they don't follow the precautions of riding motorbikes. But now the government is assuming that is unemployment. It is not. In the next few years, we will not have those youths you're seeing here. So that is not unemployment, as, according to me. So what and do you think should be done? It is proper that a structure be made. Like we can, we can have a sub, per sub county. We must know that how many people have not gone to school, how many people have left at class eight, how many people have reached form four. We cannot say, Hakuna employment. To who? Since you, you, know, uh, since you, graduated, not, yes. since you graduated, have you tried uh, seeing for job of employment opportunity? I have uh, not sought for any job opportunity. I left campus and started my own business, so I may not have that experience. Mm. Yes. Well, I think of them. I'll speak to another person here. Job opportunity. Each and every time we get youths complaining that the government promised them a job opportunity but no job. It is true. I read today's newspaper, The Standard. Uh, they are talking a country of old people. There is no single youth. Many people who are holding those offices and advising us that we should invent in other, in other businesses themselves they cannot invent themselves they, they, they are using only those positions to feed their families and to to get their survival mechanism so that is wrong number one youth should also be given positions that older people are occupying so that they can test these fresh ideas that we have secondly the political class that you are talking of, they long lost the hope in African youths and in Kenyan youth in that matter. Because whenever contracts come in, for example, we have many people with bright ideas, engineers, they are giving Chinese. In rare, case, in rare occasions, you will see them giving Kenya, typical Kenyans opportunity. However much others are not fit, but we have majority who are fit. So I think they should have hope in us, test and verify us. That is the way forward. But up to now, They've done something which is not good. Mm. Mm. Well, I think if I speak to a lady here, join me. You, you as a lady, uh, we've been getting cases whereby ladies are going to look for these jobs. And sometimes uh, we are made to understand they're being abused sexually. What do you think? Do you think the government has done enough at least to ensure that you get these job opportunities? Okay, to ladies, it's a quite challenge to them. Because, uh, for example, the private parastatals, not these public parastatals, if you go there to see for a job opportunity, you will find an old people. So there is an advantage to old people. The, the managers assume that the old people have experience more than the youths. So they, come, they end up employing the old people in their parastatals to... In, in the name of they have experience more than other youths. They are just neglecting youths without testing their skills and see if they can manage it or they cannot manage it. And again, another issue, they talk of youths to invent their own businesses or their own employment to create employment for other people. Yes, a youth can get a capital to start it, but most of them fails due to the tax. Yeah, the tax are also high, yeah, so that the youths cannot manage to afford that task. So as much as government has seen the youths to invent their own employment or their own job, they should also check 
under the taxes and at least lower it with some percentage. Well, well. Yeah. That, that, then you've, you've had uh, one of your colleagues there saying that uh, most of the position that uh, the youth should be occupying, they have been giving to all the older people. What do you think about this? Uh, to some extent it's true, but there's no form of employment where you'll go and find that you are fit. Whichever way you go, you need some slight training so that you get into the swing. Mm -hmm. But you see, uh, when you don't have somebody to hold your hand, you will not access, access such opportunities. Mm -hmm. And so I say, if the government is serious about employing the youth, we should see Ministry of Employment. Yes. Well, I thank you very much. I, I, you've just heard that from the youth here. They are saying that uh, they promised that the leaders, that their leaders promised, especially during election year period, has not been fulfilled. And of course, uh, they are saying that the issue uh, of experience and also the issue of uh, uh, all the people occupying the space that the youth should be occupying is also a shame to the society. And they are saying that something should be done. And also, the youth should be empowered with uh, capital so as at least to enable them to be innovative at the government, also usually uh, a campaign for innovation uh, issues in the country back to you.